Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. But uh, in actuality, this is more of a task. So the task at hand is to determine whether a room is square. Now, if you don't know uh, what this word square means, I will tell you this as we get into the solution. But uh, let's go ahead and read the rest of the problem. We're being told uh, that the diagonal across this room is 15 feet, the length is 11 feet, and the width is 6 feet. All right, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then, of course, we'll walk through the solution step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, let's go ahead and take one more look at this uh, problem before I show you the answer. Now, the answer is either going to be yes or no, right? So the room is either square or it is not. So we're gonna to check to see if a room is square. So what does this uh, square mean? Well, uh, let me just go ahead and just draw a room. So if the corners in a room are uh, right or 90 degrees, well, that indicates that that room is square. So square indicates or tells us or is the same thing synonymous with a right angle or 90 degrees. Now the diagonal uh, in this particular room, just in case you don't know what this word means, is the length from uh, one corner to the opposite corner. Okay, so this would be the diagonal or this would be the diagonal right there. Okay, so uh, just wanna make sure all of you uh, understand the problem completely because I wanna give you a full opportunity to solve this thing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is no, this room is not square. Okay, so if you got this right, that is fantastic. Let's go ahead and celebrate by giving a nice little happy face in A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can tell your friends and family that indeed you know how to determine whether their rooms are square and your friends and family will be like uh, yeah i don't need that and plus i have one of these little gizmos right here uh, and these things are actually called a square uh, for those of you out there that uh, know a thing or two about trades and construction all right so uh, there's a lot of well i would say a lot of different ways you can approach this problem but from a mathematical standpoint we could even use trigonometry to uh, check this problem, but that would be just like too much uh, you know, math to determine uh, whether this particular room is square or not. So how you determine the answer here is uh, you know, um, uh, really up to you. Now, if you guessed, we're like, I don't think this room is square, that's great as well, but let's go ahead and review some uh, really important uh, math concepts to determine whether something has a right angle or not. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. Now, of course, we are dealing with a math word problem, so you always want to use the rule of three. Read the thing at least three times, and if you don't understand any aspect of a problem, this is really important for those of you out there that are students, you need to ask you know, your teacher. Raise your hand and be like, hey, I don't know what this word means, square. I don't know what the diagonal is, and uh, hopefully your teacher will tell you. Uh, but if you're working a problem out all by yourself, you know, just like, uh, you know, reading a, um, you know, book or something, you come across a word, you're like, I don't know what that word means. You want to stop, get your dictionary or just look it up online. That's how you build your vocabulary, right? But you got to understand the problem uh, in order to solve the problem. So really what we're looking to do here is to uh, determine if the angles in this room are 90 degree or right angles, right? So we have some information about this room, so it's gonna be a good idea to maybe uh, sketch out uh, you know, this room, and of course we'll be doing that in a second, but uh, we need some mathematical concepts here in order to solve this problem. But uh, let's just quickly review again what square indicates. So here is a triangle. If uh, this angle right here is a right angle, okay, that means that it is 90 degrees and the notation is like this, but it's often uh, times referred to as a square uh, or something being square. In other words, um, hey, uh, you know, like if this was um, a piece of wood, if we're building something or constructing something, this would be a square angle. Now, interesting enough, uh, for those of you that don't know, there's actually 
uh, nice tools, nice metal things like this. Uh, you know, probably, I don't know if they're stainless steel, maybe aluminum, I guess. Uh, and you would just take this thing and you would slide this actual square like this, you know, into the angle. And you would be like, hey, look, uh, yes, it lines up nice and lovely. So therefore, you know, that angle uh, is square, right? So in practicality, you can definitely check square. But there's uh, all different sorts of ways you can, you know, um, uh, determine whether something is square. Now, this is a simple type of uh, problem where there's maybe a piece of wood here or a piece of or, or a room, for example, right? But we could be talking about something like, let's say we had a gigantic piece of farmland, right? And we wanted to kind of, you know, uh, make a nice uh, fence or something, a re nice rectangular fence. So we wanted to make sure we had right angles. Well, you know, it's going to be pretty difficult to check this is square if we get our little tiny square like this. So we're going to want to use some math. So let's get into uh, some math right now. So there is a very important formula that I'm going to show you. But before I show you that, I'm going to actually kind of reverse this here in a second. Let's go ahead and just uh, take a look at the actual problem. So here is the room in question. Uh, so the, dim the dimensions are, uh, we got 6 feet for the width, 11 feet for the length, and the diagonal across the room is 11, uh, or I'm sorry, 15 feet. Now, we don't know if it is a right angle. I mean, just because this is indicating a right angle, this is, there's a question mark here saying, well, is this a right angle? In other words, can we actually have a right angle with these dimensions? Now, if in fact this is a right triangle right here, if this is a right angle, well, then that would indicate that this room is square. So, and, um, you know, really we're kind of dealing with a rectangular type of scenario, but uh, more uh, to really kind of uh, uh, solve this mathematically, we want to think of this problem in terms of a triangle. Okay, so we're going to be using the diagonal, which again is the opposite uh, one corner to the opposite corner of the room, which is 15 feet. We have the length and we have the width. So we're going to study this triangle right here to determine whether in fact this is a right angle. And if we have all the lengths of a triangle, we can determine whether in fact it is a quote unquote right triangle or a square triangle. We don't use that word square to refer to a triangle. We just normally say, hey, it's a right triangle or a 90 degree triangle. Okay, so how can we do this? Well, we can use a reference triangle. Now I'm gonna get to a formula here in a second, but uh, I do know that there are people in the trades, okay, well, I've seen this from time to time. I'm talking about people, real professionals that know how to build houses and all that kind of good stuff. Because uh, I've talked to a lot of these folks, and I've actually done uh, some home projects myself. But this little triangle right here is a great little reference triangle to determine whether uh, you have a, a square or right angle. And it is 3, 4, 5. This is what we call a Pythagorean triple. Okay, So if you have one side of a triangle that's 3, the other side is 4, and another side is 5, this is indeed a 90-degree right uh, triangle. In other words, this angle right here is square. Now, this is a reference triangle, but uh, if we kind of um, use various ratios of this um, or various proportions of this triangle, uh, those these same triangles would also be square. So in other words, let's just take each side here and multiply it by 2. So instead of 5, we'll just double that. So that'll be 10. And then instead of 4, we'll double that. That'll be 8. Instead of 3, We'll double that, that'll be six. This triangle right here is also square. So any uh, uh, triangle that's proportionate to three, four, five is also going to be square. So that's kind of a nice little handy uh, tool that you can have if you don't have a calculator available, right? So uh, this is just one little food for thought, but really this is kind of, um, you know, leading towards looking at this um, these triangles to, in other words, somebody might be saying, uh, Hey, why is three, four, five? Why, why is this a right triangle? Why is this a square triangle? Well, I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at why uh, three, four, five is a lovely right triangle, and it happens to uh, to deal with this thing right here, which is called the Pythagorean theorem. This is an absolute must-know thing in uh, basic mathematics, like basic geometry. And it looks pretty fancy, right? A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, but this is not that difficult. So A, B, and C, uh, these are just variables that represent the sides of a triangle. The main thing that you have to remember is that the C always is the longest side of a 
uh, right triangle, okay, which is called the hypotenuse. So if you have, in fact, a right triangle, the longest side, and it's pretty easy to see uh, where the longest side is, but it's always opposite from the 90 degree angle. This side is C for our formula, okay? Now the other two sides can be A or B. We don't really, you know, it doesn't really make a difference. So uh, the main thing is to know in this formula, C is always the longest side. Okay, so what does this mean though? Well, it means that uh, if we take the square, okay, if we square the shorter side, so if we take three squared, for example, and then we add it to four squared, that's gonna be equal to five squared, all right? This relationship always holds true in any right triangle. So let's go ahead and check this. We'll actually do this, three squared plus four squared. Is this actually equal to five squared? And then we'll check uh, this uh, triangle as well to see if uh, six squared plus eight squared is equal to 10 squared because this triangle is proportionate to this triangle. So let's go ahead and check this using the Pythagorean theorem. So here is the math. Okay, so three squared plus four squared is equal to five squared. So three squared, of course, is nine plus four squared is 16 and five squared is 25. Nine plus 16 is 25. 25 is equal to 25. So this checks out. How about six squared plus eight squared is equal to 10 squared? Well, six squared is 36. Eight squared is 64. And 36 and 64 is 100. 10 squared is 100. 100 is equal to 100. Okay, so uh, you can kind of see here that we can definitely use the Pythagorean theorem to check to see if our lovely room is uh, square. But I kind of wanted to uh, do this problem a little bit uh, in different order in, instead of just kind of introducing you to the Pythagorean theorem, I wanted to kind of give you this slice, lovely little Pythagorean uh, triple, three, four, five, and a quick reminder that, hey, any, uh, you know, any triangle that's in proportion to this uh, is a right triangle. So you can kind of do some quick uh, mental calculations if you just remember this one lovely triangle instead of doing this math in your head. Okay, so with all that, we can take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel before we see how this room is not square. Now, um, I definitely need your help, okay? Um, hopefully, I'm teaching you a thing or two about math or you're being entertained. And if that's the case, well, then that is enough of a reason to subscribe. But really, uh, I hope that a better reason for you to subscribe to my channel is to support me in my work, in my passion, in my efforts to reach as many people as I possibly can uh, so I can help them in mathematics. There is a lot of people that struggle in math. And, uh, you know, it's really uh, been my, my goal is to find these uh, folks. Now, of course, YouTube is a great platform because I can reach millions and millions of people. So I feel like I'm making some tiny, small contribution, but I need your help to continue to, uh, continue to uh, grow and find these folks. So by you subscribing, it really does a lot more than you actually think. But if you're gonna do that, you might as well hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. And uh, thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully you'll continue to watch my other videos. And by the way, if you're new to my channel, I have uh, a couple thousand videos, actually 2,500 plus in the areas of basic math to advanced math and everything in between. So I like to kind of mix it up a little bit just in case if you find this problem a little bit too easy. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, finish this problem up. So now that we know the Pythagorean th uh, triple or uh, and the Pythagorean theorem, we have our room and let's suppose we're sitting there, we don't have a calculator, we don't have you know, any paper or pencil, we're just kind of, yeah, let me see here, does this room look square? Now, <laughs> obviously the first thing is probably a lot of you pros out here, you're gonna look at the room and they're gonna be, hmm, you're gonna look at that and it's gonna look kind of uh, like funny. You're gonna be like, well, okay, that room is clearly not square. So you could probably even see this uh, with your eye. But, you know, sometimes, you're, you know, the you know a room or some, an angle can be just a little bit off square. But, you know, when it comes to construction and trades, when something calls for a right angle, it better be precisely a right angle. So that's why you always wanna triple check these things. Okay, so what could we do here? Well, we could uh, we could use the Pythagorean triple here, right? We could think about our little three, four, five, three, four, five right triangle. So we have a 15 and say, well, you know what? Uh, I know my three, four, five right triangle. So if I divide this 15 by three, I'll end up with the five. So that's interesting. That's like my three, four, five right triangle. So if I'm gonna divide the 15 by three, I gotta divide everything by three. So the six, divided by three, that's gonna be a two, okay? And then 11 divided by three, 
uh, roughly that's going to be three point, uh, a little over 3.5. It's actually around 3.6. So just looking at these numbers, if a 3.45, right, a 3.45 is the proportion that we need to have a right triangle. Here we have five, we have a hypotenuse of five, and then down here we have three, so this is a little bit over three. So we're like, all right, well, is this, you know, this seems like two, and this, this should be more closer to four. So even, you know, from a mathematical standpoint, it doesn't seem like these uh, numbers are going to kind of fit in to a, a lovely right triangle scenario, right? So, uh, but the only way, to, you know, to kind of uh, determine this absolutely is just to kind of run these numbers through the Pythagorean theorem. So let's go and do that right now. So here is the lengths of our uh, uh, potential square or right uh, room. And uh, let's just go ahead and check to see if, if these numbers work out. All right, so 11 squared, that's the length, is 121, uh, plus 6 squared, that is the width, that's 36, and then di the diagonal is 15 squared, which is 225. So you can see that 121 and uh, 36, when we add them together, is 157. That's nowhere near 225, so obviously this room is not square. Okay. Okay, so the whole point uh, to this video, obviously we wanted to review uh, right triangles and the Pythagorean theorem, but I think the bigger point is that math is everywhere. Uh, not only people that are going to college and going to get a degree need mathematics. Matter of fact, uh, a lot of you out there may have uh, a lot of experience in the trades, like maybe uh, construction or in, uh, you know, maybe being an electrician or a surveyor. And there is a lot of math there, so it definitely pays to know um, a lot of mathematics. Now, if some of you um, out there um, need help in strengthening your math skills, maybe you want to uh, you know, just get better at your job, or maybe you are preparing to go to a particular vocational school or trade school, and that is fantastic, uh, check out uh, this course. I'm going to uh, refer you to my Math Skills Rebuild a Course. Uh, this course is designed for uh, those of you out there that obviously want to rebuild or strengthen your math skills. Now, in this particular course, I start off with basic math, then I, uh, we work up to a lot of algebra and geometry and some basic trigonometry and even some uh, basic uh, probability and statistics. So uh, you'll have a very well-rounded uh, kind of math education, and uh, this will serve you well in a lot of uh, areas uh, in terms of trades, whether it's uh, you know, being an electronic technician, electrician, uh, HVAC, et cetera, et cetera. Again, uh, you know, anybody that goes to those particular, um, you know, uh, routes, you know, as a career, you have to know at least basic algebra. But the more math you know, the better off you're going to be. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.